It seemed like a, that one seemed like we're kind of developing. Uh, Good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting, the 1st of 2012 for Monday, January 9th. I'd ask everyone in attendance to join us in singing our national anthem. Thank you to the National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Uh, that'll bring us to the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. I see Councillor Crogan. Thank you, Craig. I move that uh, we adopt the uh, minutes of the City Council meeting held December the 12th, 2011. Thanks very much, Councillor Crogan. Did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And our first vote of 2012 is a success. So we'll move on to the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move the council adopt the agenda as presented with the addition of 8.3 city manager employment contract. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on the adoption of the agenda? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Rice? Do, do, did we ever give any thought to, instead of calling him the uh, city manager, calling him the chief administrative officer or something like that? <laughs> uh, well, I think actually by the MGA, the title in the, un under the legislation is actually uh, chief administrative officer. Uh, so so we can, he, he'll answer to a lot of different things. As long as he gets paid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Rice. Um, so we have the adoption of the agenda and this is, brings us to the delegation portion of our meeting. Our first delegation opportunity of 2012, a chance for anybody in the community to come forward to speak to council on any issue. I'd look out into the crowd to see if there's anybody that'd like to come and speak to council and address us on any community related matter. Uh, and it doesn't look like there's anybody coming forward so we'll move on from the delegation portion of the agenda into public hearings and uh, item 6.1 bylaw C. 1083-05 and by let's see 1100-177. I'd call these public hearings to order and would look for an introduction by administration. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. This item is a um, result of an application by Focus Corporation on behalf of the owners of the subject parcel to amend the Meadowview Area Structure Plan, amend the Cobblestone East Outline Plan, 
and amend the land use bylaw. The subject property, as shown on the map here, is located in the Cobblestone East neighborhood. Um, of course, 100th Avenue is right here, 92nd Street right here. Um, the amendment is to address the proposal to redesignate the site from its current multifamily designation to single family use. Advertisements for the bylaws were completed in accordance with the act and there were no, um, there have been no responses to any of the uh, advertisements or letters. The property is a 1.5 hectare site. Uh, to the south of it will be a future school site and uh, all around it in every direction otherwise is uh, single family lotting immediately north of it is a small neighborhood park. The proposed amendment uh, works quite well in terms of design. On the left here we have the existing configuration, the, uh, this parcel right here being the multifamily site. And as you can see by simply extending the street straight through the site, uh, it lends itself quite well to a reasonable uh, lotting and street configuration. Uh, it slightly expands the, the neighborhood park to the north of it. In terms of servicing water and sanitary, on um, the southeast quadrant of the city, in the past the city and developers had uh, entered into some unique agreements to actually expand the densities or to increase the densities in that area. Uh, the servicing capacity was not there for those expansions, so um, they, we, uh, we looked at doing some unique things that involved uh, on-site storage of the sanitary and then peak uh, off-peak pumping so that, say, in 3 in the morning, the, the system would kick in and pump out the, the uh, waste. So this proposed uh, amendment actually reduces that uh, that the need to do that uh, servicing scenario. On the, in the southeast quadrant of the city, there are a number of multifamily sites. So um, it, it, this um, amendment does not remove the only multifamily site in that area. There is a reasonable mix of multifamily and single family in this, in this area. In summary, administration recommends that council give bylaw C1083-05 second and third reading, amend the cobblestone east outline plan by resolution, and give bylaw C1100-177 second and third reading. Okay, thanks very much, Mr. Johnson. Um, so we have an opportunity now for presentation and submissions, uh, and we had one delegation that let us know that they wanted to come forward, Mr. Cooper with Cobblestone Land Corporation and Mr. Fredrickson from Focus. Guys, if you want to join us at the presenter's table. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councillors. Uh, my name is Bob Cooper. I'm Development Manager with Cobblestone Land Corp. Uh, with me is Mike Fredrickson from Focus. Um, just wanted to share a couple of things just in regards to the reasoning behind uh, rezoning the multi-site from, uh, from our standpoint, from a market standpoint. Um, so just a couple of points. First, first off, I, I would like to say that uh, the process working with planning and administration on, on doing this has been, has been positive. There's been some good input uh, from the planning department and, and the city in terms of our, our layout and coming up with a workable layout that was, that was I think, uh, good for both of us. A um, little more park space, a little easier on snow removal and some of those things and traffic movability. So um, that process was good. So thank you to uh, the planning and administration for that. I guess, uh, Mr. Mayor, the reasons for rezoning that multi-site, particularly in our case, is just uh, the, the market for multifamily development is just uh, still very challenging in the city. And uh, as Joe pointed out, there's quite a bit of uh, market, multifamily uh, sites to be absorbed in the market at this time. 
around the city there's probably some 25 to 30 acres right now uh, to be absorbed into the market and not to mention the unsold uh, units that are still in the projects that are underway right now. So absorptions are facing challenges. Uh, we've had this parcel for about three years and uh, just felt that it was uh, maybe time to look at some creative options of what we could do with that land um, and just what made sense uh, to configure the land to the market reality. Um, however, um, in doing this rezoning for this particular site, we also want to point out that should the market rebound uh, on that particular product uh, sooner than we think, we definitely have the capacity and the land supply on, the, on lands that are currently zoned for that to, to respond in kind. So um, at this time, that's uh, what we are requesting that the Mayor and Council would support the, the change. So thank you. And uh, Mike and I are here if there's any other questions on that. Okay, thanks very much. Um, any questions from Council for the delegation? Councillor Gustafson. Thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, when about do you think you'd be planning on building this year yet, this summer? Uh, in terms of servicing the lots? Um, yeah, we've uh, we've done some preliminary, like with the layout that was that was uh, uh, put up there. Um, so we've done some preliminary planning on looking at servicing that land, and and uh, it's definitely. Uh, a possibility here this year if the market demands if we could if we could do that yeah that would be thank the you. plan okay. thanks councillor Gustafson councillor McLean uh, thank you Mary Given uh, one of my questions uh, councillor Gustafson asked and so because sometimes it can go two three four years um, depending on the market but in this playground is there going to be swings and a slide and in the playground is it just going to be grass and we're calling it the playground it's, it's <laughs> off it's not on the subjects going on but I'd like to know yeah, the uh, the extra the, there's 0 0.2 hectares of, of extra park space there that's over and above our normal MR requirement to, to work with the layout, and we would be looking at whatever whatever uh, once we get into the planning and design portion and working with the city uh, engineering. Did you have something you wanted to add with the I just park want, itself? I just wanted to say it is an existing park at, at this yeah. time and swings all the park equipment as per the city standards will be installed. Mm -hmm. And, Absolutely. And what I'm wondering would it be expand a bit or a few more houses going in or or no? Like it's, it's just on the playground. The it's playground just, equipment as such is there already okay. established and passed to the city and mm -hmm. what we would be doing would be um, adding park space to that existing park to expand it, I guess to accommodate the extra okay. the extra room and usage, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Council McLean, any further questions for the delegation? This is Council's opportunity to ask any questions of the delegation, the presenters. Seeing none, then thanks very much, guys. Much Thank appreciated. You. Um, so this is still the delegation portion or presentation submission portion of the public hearing on bylaw C-1080-305 and C-1100-177 uh, to make amendments to the cobblestone east outline plan and the Meadowview area structure plan. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to speak uh, to the issue? Anybody else that would like to speak in favor of the amendments? Uh, anyone that would like to speak in opposition to the amendments that are being proposed? Okay, seeing no one coming forward, then I will uh, close the presentation submission portion and uh, would look for any additional questions that council members had for administration. Any further questions for administration? Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Given. To our planning department, it uh, seems like we've sidestepped this issue of having to do anything with the sanitary sewer, but is there adjacent land that will be developed in the future that could uh, bring this issue back up? So is it something that we're going to have to deal with within a certain time period? Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, we will have to deal with it because past amendments um, included that need for this unique servicing scenario. This simply reduces the need somewhat. It doesn't entirely eliminate it. Um, it is possible that uh, by the time development starts to get up to those uh, multifamily sites that additional modeling has been done to uh, confirm or to rule out the need for that those additional me measures but in case uh, there are those constraints still that that will need to need to be done okay, okay. that's good thank you okay. mm -hmm. 
Thanks very much, Mr. Johnson. Thanks, Councillor Wong. Any further questions for administration? Uh, seeing none, then I would close the public hearing and would look for business arising. We have some motions. I see Councillor Gustafson in the queue first. Councillor Gustafson. Thanks, Mayor Kevin. I'll move that Council give bylaw C-1083-05 to amend the Meadowview Area Structure Plan second reading. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. So a motion for second reading. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Gustafson. Thanks, Mayor Given. I'll move that Council give bylaw C-1083-05 to amend the Meadowview Area Structure Plan third reading. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Any discussion or debate on third reading? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, so we have a couple of additional pieces of business as uh, this sort of amendment affects a few different plans. Councillor Rice. Uh, are we moving on to bylaw C-1100? I would move second reading of bylaw C-1100177 to amend the land use bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. So uh, motion sec for second reading to amend the land use bylaw. Uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Rice? I would move third reading of bylaw C-1100177 to amend the land use bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. So a motion for third reading. Uh, any discussion or debate on third reading? <coughs> Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. And so we had one final plan that uh, was affected by this change. Councillor Radburn? Thank you, Mayor Given. I move uh, Council approve the amended cobblestone east outline plan by resolution. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Um, any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the Council McLean. Discussion? I had one question that probably made me go to Mr. Johnson about about the plan. It's adding a few more homes in here. Am I wrong or right on that? Taking them away. Okay. They're taking away from multiplex? They're adding in, more houses? So the single detached houses. It's it's sort of adding more single detached, but in terms of overall density and number of people living there, it will reduce that, that amount. Okay. okay. Uh, any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Um, I believe that was all of our public hearings. Uh, we'd move on to uh, unfinished business, of which we had none, and into reports in item 8.1, bylaw C-108304, bylaw C-1262, bylaw C-1100-173. Maybe we could have a brief introduction from administration on this. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, Focus Corporation has submitted an application to amend the Meadowview Area Structure Plan adopt the Brookfield outline plan and amend the land use bylaw. The subject property is the southeast quarter of section 19, 71, 5, west of the 6th meridian, which is the quarter that is directly north of Eagle Estates on the map behind you. The Meadowview ASP uh, application for amendment is proposing to establish a commercial and multifamily residential site within the plan area that don't currently exist. The land use bylaw amendment would rezone the lands from urban reserve to a mix of land use districts and the Brookfield outline plan would detail that um, development. This would be the first outline plan which council would be adopting by bylaw. As council may recall, an, a recent amendment went through that we are uh, moving towards adopting outline plans as uh, uh, as area structure plans in effect to uh, create bylaws out of them. And um, aside from that, the recommendation is that council give all of the bylaws first reading and establish February 6th for the public hearing. Okay, thanks very much for that introduction, Mr. Johnson. Uh, so we look for business arising from that recommendation. Councillor Rice. I move uh, first reading of bylaw C-1083-04 to amend the Meadowview, Meadowview Area Structure Plan. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. So we have, uh, we'll have a motion for first reading on all of these and then we'll set the date and time for all of them at, at the end. 
Yeah. Okay, so you will, yeah, yeah we That's fine. So we'll, we'll vote on yeah. first reading of each of them first. Thanks yeah. very much. Okay, so motion for first reading. Uh, any discussion or debate? Uh, seeing none, call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, Councilor Rice, do you want to carry on? With sure. This? I move uh, first reading of bylaw C1262 to amend the Brookfield Neighborhood Outline Plan bylaw. Okay. Thanks very much, Councilor Rice. Uh, motion for first reading. I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Rice. I move first reading of bylaw C1100 173 to amend the land use bylaw. Thanks very much, Councilor Rice. Uh, motion for first reading. It will call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries in the date and time, Councilor Rice. I move that Council establish Monday, February 6, 2012, at 6 30 p.m. in Council Chambers as the date, time, and location for public hearing purposes for bylaw C 108304, bylaw C 1262 and bylaw C1100173. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. So that motion sets the date and time uh, for public hearing purposes for, uh, or sorry, for, um, yeah, for public hearing purposes, sorry, excuse me, um, for all of those above items. Uh, any discussion or debate as to date, time, and location? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries, and, uh, and those ones are set. So that'll bring us to item 8.2, bylaw C 106605, Southwest Area Structure Plan Amendment, and bylaw C 1100-178, Land Use Bylaw Amendment. And again, maybe a brief introduction from administration. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. An application to amend the Southwest Area Structure Plan, the O'Brien Lake Outline Plan, and the Land Use Bylaw has been submitted by Focus Corporation on behalf of the owners of the property. The proposed amendments address the relocation of a multifamily site to an adjacent property in the Southwest Area Structure Plan and a redesignation of a commercial site to single family use. Uh, administration recommends that City Council give these bylaws first reading and establish Monday, February 6th as the date of the public hearing. Okay, thanks very much, Mr. Johnson. Um, so we'd look for motions for first reading on those items. Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I move that Council give bylaw C11 or C106605 to amend the Southwest Area Structure Plan first reading. Thank you very much, Councillor Wong. So motion for first reading. I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Wong, do you want to carry on with the rest of these? Move that Council give bylaw C 1100-178 to amend the land use bylaw first reading. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Wong. So motion for first reading. I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Wong. I move Council approve OP-0301-B to amend the O'Brien Lake Outline Plan. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Wong. First reading for that. That was an error. It should not be on the agenda. That's part of the public hearing process. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so Councillor Wong will just strike that last motion. It's not required. Okay. And I think we can move straight on to date, time, and location. I move that Council establish Monday, February 6, 2012, at 6.30 p.m. in Council Chambers as the date, time, and location for public hearing purposes for bylaw C-106605 and bylaw... Bylaw C 1100-178 and OP 0301-B. Uh, okay. I think uh, that's uh, in order. I'm not sure if that's necessary for the OP portion. Uh, look to our They're all clerk. dealt with under the public hearing. So. Okay. 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 Uh, thanks very much, Councillor Wong, for the motion. Any discussion or debate as to date, time, and location? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. And uh, that would bring us to item 8.3, which was our additional agenda <coughs> item. And Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, I move that Council approve a new employment contract with Mr. Greg Serbak for the position of City Manager. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Uh, if I might, I'll speak to the motion. 
Um, Mr. Trebek's been a longtime uh, city employee, um, and uh, this is a regular course of business of uh, renewing his contract. We're moving to a little bit of a new format of contract, but we certainly appreciate the job that uh, Greg has done for us in the past and look forward to continuing on that relationship. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion? Uh, Councillor McLean. Uh, I just have to say I've uh, worked with Greg for the last year, first year of council, and I think he's done an incredible job, and I look forward to working at least two more years with him. Now, is that reflective of Greg's term of employment, or? Oh, there's an election coming up, right. Right. <laughs> Any further discussion or debate? Good to keep it open, yeah. Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, so we'll move on to item uh, section number nine, committee business, and item 9.1, Pursuit of Excellence Committee. And Councillor McLean, did you handle that committee? Councillor McLean? Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. I move that Council receive the minutes of Pursuit of Excellence Committee meeting held December 8, 2011. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Did anyone note any errors or omissions from that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Council McLean, was there anything that you wanted to highlight from that set of minutes? Okay, thank you. Uh, that would take us to the Public Works Committee from December 13th and Councillor Gustafson. I think you had that meeting. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I'll move that Council receive the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held December 13th, 2011. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move that Council approve providing free transit service from the Salvation Army soup kitchen to the Rotary House as follows. Number one, services provided during winter months or when the temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius, <coughs> hopefully only in the winter. Rotary House, number two, Rotary House will be responsible for charges related to extra cleaning or damage incurred by their clients during the ride to the Rotary House. And number three, a security agent will be available to at the Salvation Army Kitchen to accompany the bus driver to the Rotary House. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Uh, discuss or debate on the motion, Councillor Rice. I'm sorry I missed that meeting. I, you mean we're going to take a whole transit bus over there? Like, this is not just, here's a free bus ticket. It's like a charter bus. Councillor Gustafson? Well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's going to be about $30,000 cheaper to do it this way than the old way. We were doing it, and I can't recall our public works director isn't here. If we're what kind of bus we are taking? Uh, just it's city a, transit. It is a city transit bus. Yeah. If memory serves, though, this is a bus that just before it finishes up uh, its nightly rounds, when it is off duty, before it heads back to the transit barn, it uh, will make its final stop here just as a one sort of pickup, drop off, and then head back. So it's an off duty bus uh, that's just finishing. Its do we, do we not Finish have job. an acting public works director or someone here? No. Is there anybody? Uh, and I, I have more questions. So it, it's an off duty bus. And just before it heads back to the barn, it swings by Rotary House, picks these people up, waits, and then takes them back to Rotary House. No. No, no it takes them from the Salvation Army soup kitchen back to Rotary House. I guess just to put a little context in it, this is for people that have no place to stay. So it's called the MAT program. They're able to go stay at a warm place overnight at the Rotary House. So they eat supper at the soup kitchen and instead of walking over there in the cold winter temperatures, they are able to take the bus. Before we were using cabs and it was a, quite a substantial amount of money. This way we were able to cut the costs and provide a better service for the people who need a place to sleep. And yet they have to have a security guard on the bus. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, that was a condition that City Transit asked for. Uh, when providing the service for Salvation Army. And Salvation Army agreed to cover that cost. That's right. It's kind of unfortunate when you're doing someone a favor that you have to protect yourself from them, but whatever. Okay, Councillor McLean. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I think everybody knows about how I think of free transit, but on this issue of Rotary, there's some young families just moved to town or have, you know, starting off and having a hard time, and there's some children involved in this, so I do think it's a good initiative, and uh, on this one, I'd be voting for it. Thanks, Councilor McLean. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries with one opposed. Councillor Gustafson, was there anything else from that Public Works Committee meeting that you wanted to highlight? Uh, no, that's all, uh, Mayor, Mayor Given. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. So that brings us to the Community Development Committee from December 13th and Councillor Krogan. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Development Committee meeting uh, held December 13th, 2011. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Um, did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Okay, so just one note of uh, uh, somebody who attended the meeting and the spelling of the name, so we'll make sure that that gets recorded. Thanks very much. Uh, if there's nothing further, then I'll call for the vote on the minutes. <coughs> Thank you. And that motion carries. <coughs> Councillor Crokin, if you'd like to carry on. Thank you. Very good. Uh, I move Council approve a new civic award beginning in 2012, recognizing one volunteer organization or foundation that has made a significant uh, contribution to our community. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Just to speak to that, sure, Mayor Given, please. it's uh, very, very similar to the George Repka Award, but uh, that's just for an individual, and this could be for a group or corporation. And uh, nothing's been uh, nominated as of today. Sure, okay. Um, at this point, Council would have to approve the award first, and excellent. Any or discussion or debate on the motion? Do it. Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries, and Councillor Crokin, I think you had at least one more, hey? uh, Yes, I, I uh, move Council approve a $1 per hour increase in uh, home support client fees. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, Councillor Crokin, why is this increase uh, needed? Uh, Mayor Gibbon, it's been a number of years, and I think I'll go back six or seven years, there's been no change in the hourly rate so we've uh, approved at one dollar an hour rate which is not really significant but it is moving toward um, a little higher uh, remuneration okay. uh, councillor rice is this not an fcss program is um, so that gary mr roth would you like to speak to it uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, certainly part of the program is subsidized, uh, but it is there is a piece where the clients do pay for for uh, for some of the services as well. But it is an FCSS program, so if we chose to, we could do 80-20 funding on this one. Mr. Roth? I'm, to my in, in recollection, we provide some subsidy already to the, towards the program, if I'm, if I'm correct. That is the subsidy we yeah. provide, it's the FCSS That's money, correct. yeah. Okay, thank you, Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Gibbons. So just for clarity, this is the the fees that the clients are gonna be charged? Mr. Roth. Mr. Mayor, yes, that's correct. Uh, the clients pay, uh, as they are subsidized, and it does, the fee actually varies depending upon their income levels, um, but it, the proposal is to increase all the rates by $1 an hour. Uh, the, the rates, range from anywhere from $5 an hour to $26 an hour, depending on their income level. Most clients are in the, uh, the highly subsidized fee category, so they pay the lowest fees. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Mr. Roth. Uh, any further discussion or debate on the motion? <sighs> Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. <clears throat> thank you. And that motion <coughs> carries with one opposed. Uh, Councillor Crokin, was there anything else that you wanted to highlight from that set of minutes? No, there isn't. Uh, okay. You're good. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. That would bring us then to Environment Committee from December 19th. And Councillor Monroe, I believe you had that meeting. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move that Council receive the minutes of the Environment Committee meeting held December 19th, 2011. 
thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Um, any notes of any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, Councillor Monroe, is there anything that you wanted to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, sure, Mayor Gavin. It, it was a relatively short meeting. There wasn't a lot of information to digest. Uh, however, just to give an update, uh, uh, we've uh, instructed administration to continue working on bylaw C-1264, which is the water efficient fixtures bylaw. Uh, they're at the stage right now where they will be going to uh, stakeholders and uh, bring a report back and recommendation back to that committee um, with uh, what changes are needed. And other than that, it was really a short meeting. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Councilor Monroe. Um, then, if there was nothing else, and we sorry, we did accept that set of minutes, I believe. Um, then we would move into correspondence, of which we had none. Um, delegation business. We had no delegations present to council tonight. Uh, we have no notices of motion. Uh, council member reports. We did have uh, a couple and. Councillor O'Toole, I believe you had two of them, the Grand Prairie Airport Commission and then the Grand Prairie Public Library Board? Yes. Yes, actually, I've got three. If you, uh, I've got uh, Combative Sports as well. Okay. Uh, so start off with Combative Sports. We did have a meeting, uh, and we reviewed uh, bylaw C-1173A. Basically, it was some housekeeping uh, requirements that we needed to do basically to get uh, more friendlier terminology and definitions out there. Uh, we granted, uh, there was two applications for promoter's license. One individual was from Edmonton, one individual uh, was from Lloyd Minister, and we granted an application for an event license for KNK with some conditions, and I can tell you that the conditions weren't met, so that uh, has been put on hold. Going to the library board, we have uh, some highlights just from the meeting. Uh, I was able to go over and give uh, greetings and thanks for four individuals that put in a lot of time at the library. Uh, Daniela Rebar, she uh, had five years of service with the local library here. Uh, Judy Dixon was 10 years. Laurie Nawakowitzinson, that's a hard one, so I probably got that one wrong. 20 years, and Pamela Cheslett, 30 years. So 30 years with the library in town. I thought that was an outstanding uh, a number of years. The next highlight I got is the customer service survey. Uh, we. The survey showed that 90% satisfaction rate. Uh, facility had a 4.72 out of 5, and the staff received a 4.65 out of 5. Uh, some of the in, uh, ratings were based on staff, collections, facilities, electronic resources, hours of operation, and just overall satisfaction. Uh, going on to the airport, uh, Commission, we looked at our budget for 2012 and some and the new and the business plan. Uh, some of the items that we discussed was uh, operation and maintenance. We will be doing some projects this year. Uh, there will be a fence replacement. Uh, the replacement requires uh, well, it's been 30 years old and it needs to be replaced. Uh, some equipment replacement, uh, some light vehicles, some equipment as well. Ventilation program in the terminal. Uh, security parking lot expansion phase three. We're going to be going from 532 parking stalls to 750 stalls, and that will be finished and completed this year. And uh, we're also looking at the runway expansion design and the runway rehab. So we've been pretty busy. Okay. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, Councillor Wong, I believe you had Muddy Peace Watershed Alliance. Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. On January 5th, the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance came to Grand Prairie for a meeting. Uh, we discussed our AGM, which will be held on Saturday, March 24th in Peace River. So anyone interested in the water quality and quantity of the Peace River and its tributaries is encouraged to attend. Uh, there are board positions available. So if you or anyone you know is interested in serving on the board, uh, we do encourage you to come out to Peace River and attend this meeting. 
the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance also has formed a subcommittee to examine the possibility of including the Wapiti River watershed as part of our study area. Uh, the Wapiti River is a tributary to the Peace River in that it flows uh, into the Smoky River, which in turn flows into the Peace River. And due to the population in this area, the Wapiti River has the most intensive use in the Peace Laid Basin, and there is a concern that the Wapiti may not be able to meet future needs of the area. In any case, the subcommittee is going to meet this month, and the decision will be made by the spring whether or not the uh, Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance is able to oversee the development of the study and a management plan for the Wapiti River. That's my report. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Uh, I don't believe there are any other uh, Council Committee reports, and so we'll move on to Roundtable. And Councillor Radburn, would you like to start us off? Thank you, Mary Goodman. Um, <clears throat> few things to highlight. It's been a while since we met, so uh, December 14th, um, we did have a break in there too, so December 14th, I, I attended the Friendship Center Seniors Christmas Banquet at the Golden Age Center. December 21st, I uh, attended the MLA Wayne Dragill's Christmas Open House at the Curling Rink. Uh, December 22nd, Joint City County Council's meeting, and uh, uh, then we had the break, and then this past week, January 5th, I attended the Downtown Association's Christmas Survivor Celebration. Thanks for Helen and the Association for uh, hosting. And January 6th, actually, I uh, went over and met, uh, spent some time with Ainsley Lamwin Tang, our new Executive Director for with the uh, Regional Tourism Association. And I shared um, some uh, just cards. Uh, since I'm not going to be able to be at the meeting later this week because we're in our planning session, I wanted to make sure that uh, she had the sports tourism strategy um, information so that she could remind people uh, to take advantage of that uh, uh, consultation session. I think it's January 18th. Thank you, Mary Gibbon. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mary Gibbon. On December 14th, I attended an Aquatera shareholders meeting here in Grand Prairie. And after that, it was Christmas, so I spent a lot of time with my family and a lot of time at the multiplex in the pool. <laughs> after that, I went to Calgary and watched the uh, 2012 World Junior Hockey Tournament. And today, I uh, had a 100th anniversary subcommittee meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor Gustafson. Councillor Crogan. Thank you, Mayor Given. On the 14th, I also attended the Aquaterra shareholder uh, meeting reception. I met that... Uh, Sam or Stan from Dallas, very uh, intelligent fellow, and I found out he's a Republican. On the 16th, uh, I attended the City Hall, uh, I think it was the second floor that hosted the uh, Christmas buffet luncheon, and it was superb again. I, uh, I slept most of the afternoon with a lot of the staff because it was good. On the 22nd or 21st, I attended the Wayne. Uh, Drysdale's MLA Christmas uh, open house at the Curling Week. And on the 22nd, the uh, joint city county meeting at the Stonebridge was uh, very productive and eye opening for a lot of them. And then uh, it was a Christmas break, it was short but very nice. That was it. Thanks, Councillor Crokin. Uh, Councillor Monroe. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. On uh, December 14th, I was also at the Aquaterra shareholders meeting. December 20th, I had a brief meeting with Emmy Steubing, who is the uh, executive director of the Emerald Awards, and I understand that Councillor Rice will give more details on that in a minute. December 21st, uh, spent the day in a composite assessment review board hearing. Uh, as well, after that, I uh, went to the uh, our MLA Wayne Drysdale's uh, Christmas Open House. 22nd, uh, participated at the joint city county meeting at the Stonebridge Hotel. And today I had a Center for Research and Innovation uh, steering team meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councilor Monroe. Councilor Rice. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Given. I too attended uh, MLA Drysdale's open house. Uh, some extremely exciting news, as Councilor Monroe uh, alluded to. Uh, the Emerald Awards um, are, uh, uh, there's the Alberta Emerald Foundation, and they work to recognize, celebrate, and inspire environmental excellence in Alberta. They're 
flagship program is the Emerald Awards. The Emerald Awards are 20 years old. They're always held in Edmonton or Calgary. They go back and forth for the first time in its 20-year history. They are bringing the Emerald Awards out of those locations to Grand Prairie. February 1st, they will be in Grand Prairie. They've entered into a partnership with the Grand Prairie Regional College, so kudos to Don Kanadiak. Um, that uh, it's very exciting. Um, they will have an open house um, with displays from local environmental projects and groups and a keynote speaker named Simon Jackson who is the founder of the Spirit Bear Youth Coalition and has been named one of Time Magazine's 60 Heroes of the Planet. Um, and this will take place from 11.30 to 1. And then that evening from 7 to 9, there'll be a more formal speaker series and networking. And again, Simon Jackson will be the guest speaker. Um, so again, keep that date February 1st. I think it's a huge kudo uh, to Grand Prairie and to Councillor Monroe's committee that the Grand Prairie is the first venue that they picked to have these. More good news, um, ARMA, the Alberta Recycling Management Authority, is 20 years old as well. Since its inception, ARMA has participated in the recycling of 68 million tires, uh, which is a, a lot of tires. And, um, you know, again, uh, you know, you can imagine... Uh, uh, we go back to the time when smoke was billowing uh, for the big tire fire in Ontario and causing municipalities a great deal of angst. Um, they added from the original tires, paint has been added. They have recycled 7 million litres of paint and 1.3 million aerosol containers. So a lot diverted uh, from our landfills, which is pretty exciting. And one final thing, if I may, uh, to Mr. Roth, I had uh, uh, people phone me. They were looking to seek out a, a, a location for a family reunion uh, and could not get over the quality and the warmth of assistance they received from Chad at Muscassipi Park. And I believe it was Rhonda at the museum. They said it was absolutely unbelievable. They'd never experienced anything how helpful they were. And in fact, they summed it up, said almost invited them to the party. They were so nice and, and so helpful. So if you could pass that on, uh, it's wonderful to get those kind of phone calls. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. On December 14th, I attended the Aquaterra Shareholders Reception Roundtable. On the evening of the 14th, I attended a Wapiti Corridor Planning Society working session to review the draft multi-use plan. On December 15th, I attended the Remax Wine and Cheese Christmas Reception. December 16th, I attended a reception for Alberta Community Spirit. December 17th, I brought, breeding, gr brought greetings on behalf of the Mayor and Council to the Canadian Paraplegic Association's Banquet and offered an official proclamation for the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. On December 19th, I, I worked a shift for the Cal Salvation Army Kettles and I understand that after all was said and done, they did exceed all their fundraising goals and they do uh, they wanted to pass along a thank you to all the volunteers that uh, man the kettles this Christmas, including several members of council and uh, city staff that did, that did their shifts as well. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Given. I attended some of the events as, as some of the councillors went, and as well, it was Christmas, and it was a very good one. And I'm looking forward to the new year because I think uh, Grand Prairie's got a lot of positive stuff happening this year. Uh, with development of the hospital and the high school and a lot of other events. And as well as referred to by Councillor Gustavin about the multiplex, our membership's already paid for the month of January. We've used it quite a bit. And uh, the only thing I've heard about the whole complex, the only little thing, everybody loves it, is the daycare for working mothers and stuff that some hours got to be changed. But other than that, it's a wonderful facility and we're looking forward to uh, having our membership paid up within the first week. 
Thanks very much, Councilor McLean and Councilor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, on the 14th of December, I attended the shareholders meeting for Aquaterra. And also that evening, I attended the Friendship Center uh, Seniors Christmas Banquet and enjoyed some really great uh, food and great entertainment. I, uh, on the 16th, I had lunch at City Hall here. Uh, it was a potluck uh, situation. Uh, lots of city staff were there, and it was a great opportunity to mingle with the city staff as well as uh, uh, colleagues. I also showed up for the Culture Office Alberta Government, and it's the title is Community Development Officer Culture and Community uh, Services. Uh, Miriam uh, Manick. Sorry, uh, had her open house there, and it was great to see some of the people that drop by there that are involved in the culture areas. Uh, later that day, uh, I went to Wayne Drysdale's open house. Twenty uh, second, I went to the joint county city meeting. Twenty third, there was the library staff meeting and the annual breakfast that they put on. The twenty seventh, I went to the multiplex and broke my glasses. Tomorrow I get my new glasses, so I won't be looking like Roy Orbison anymore. Uh, you wish. I wish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and on the fifth, I went to the downtown association open house and uh, was entertained with uh, good stories from the business owners of downtown. So, thank you very much. That was my report. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. So um, on December 14th, I also attended the Alcatara Shareholders Meeting and the Friendship Centre Seniors Christmas Banquet. On the 15th, I attended uh, a stakeholders meeting for the GP Construction Association who are looking at um, setting up an initiative to encourage more uh, youth and more people to enter the trades. And later that afternoon, I met with here at, uh, I met here at City Hall with Rick Orman, who is working on uh, developing a Northern Alberta development strategy. Uh, was uh, a little different in that uh, he w isn't working with NADC, uh, but I understand that this is a directive or a project that comes straight from the Premier's office. Uh, so I was happy to meet with him and uh, tell him some about some of the uh, community's priorities. On December 16th, I worked a Cards for Christmas uh, lottery shift at the Grand Prairie Storm game. It was great to see all the people that came out and supported the lottery and uh, certainly thank the community for supporting the lottery uh, as it ran its course. Um, then uh, I also attended uh, MLA Wayne Drysdale's uh, open house and the joint city county uh, meeting. And uh, other than that, it was uh, Christmas holidays. And uh, certainly, as uh, a m number of other members of council mentioned, uh, I spent a fair share of time at the multiplex. Uh, very impressed to see some of the numbers of uh, people who have bought memberships. Uh, and uh, the attendance that's happened in the first month has been absolutely fantastic. And uh, so it's good to see that the community's out enjoying it and supporting the building. And uh, if there is nothing else, then we will adjourn our meeting. Thank you.